hey, I sat down with my friend Mark recently. We talked about NeoVim and Tmux and just our workflows in general. We also went into depth about our Moonlander keyboards. I had a really good time talking to Mark and uh, I hope you guys enjoy the conversation as much as I did. Let's get into it. My name's Mark Huggins. I'm a principal software engineer at a company called GLG based out of New York. Um, nobody's ever heard of us really, but we sort of have the world's best Rolodex, I guess is the way you could say it. So we are um, in the business of connecting industry leaders with uh, subject matter experts to help them inform sort of their business decisions. So very cool. Been, been here 11 years now. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. What kind of technology? I was about to say, you've been in tech. So what kind of technology do you, what kind of languages do you write in? Day -day? Uh, so primarily it's JavaScript. I've done some Python, done some other stuff in the background, but I've also been very non-traditional path. Right. I started as a comp sci major in college. First summer out, I landed a job doing QA for a video game company nice. and did that for seven years and never went back to school. Then did like data center operations, build and release engineering. And now I'm a full stack developer. So that full started stack. in 97. So I've been doing this for a while. Yeah. And so you reached out to me. You've seen some of my videos on YouTube and you're getting into this world of terminal developer environments. So like TMX and NeoVim, which is the things I want to dive with you today. Um, so tell me about that. How did you find it and how's that going so far? So being around as long as I have, I used Vim a long time ago and then just the tooling with some of the other editors and stuff came out and it was just better, right? Like it, it provided a more full experience back then. Yeah. I started with, what was it? Sublime and then Atom and then VS Code and then stumbled on or co actually a coworker was big into NeoVim and he recommended that I check it out again because we talk off and on about that kind of stuff and found that with the new NeoVim stuff and then the work that Microsoft did to open source the LSPs and, and all that sort of stuff, there's not things that I had in VS Code that I miss now that I'm in NeoVim and my computer doesn't sound like it wants to take off all day from the fan running. That's right. That's, which was the biggest one. Like, my, which, like my battery point. wouldn't last more than an hour. My oh. fan was constantly spinning. It just, yeah. And I've always, even in all those other editors, I've always kept Vim key bindings okay, for things. Cool. So like I've basic motions and stuff. So I've been using those for a long time, even though I haven't yeah. been in Vim. So you're super comfortable with Vim motions. And yeah. so this transition to Neo Vim. Yeah, I get it. I've actually also convinced some coworkers <laughs> to make the switch. So that's really cool to hear. I, I love what the NeoVim team has been doing. They've been adding some very cool integrations and we'll talk about it in a few minutes. The distributions right now that sort of pre-configure a lot of the kind of tricky stuff with NeoVim setups, these like distros, right? I started yeah. with LunarVim. LunarVim, yeah. So that one's very popular. Lazy Vim is a newer one. I'm using a Lazy Vim variation. I like to go back a step. So what we're going to do is I just want to see your workflow. Show me how you use it day to day. I guess we'll start with your terminal emulator and what shell you chose. And then it, I'm guessing you're maybe a Tmux guy. Session Getting management. into Tmux. That's a new Getting into it. Maybe. Okay, cool. So yeah, let's just, let's just get into it a little. So I use, as let me share, but as my terminal, I use Kitty. Uh, my terminal emulator, I use ZSH because that's what comes default on the Mac and it's just easy. And then for my command line prompt, I recently, about a year ago, I switched over from using power level 10K or whatever it was to using Starship for my prompt customization stuff. Yeah, I'm a Starship guy too. It's just so much easier and more intuitive to configure. Yeah. That just works. Not use it anymore. Yeah, and exactly. So let me in about five minutes, I get people set up with, with, a terminal emulator and Starship, and it's like, boom, you're off to the races. You have a decent right, so environment. You see right? here's just my prompt with Starship. It's pretty basic, just the path. Yeah. I forget what the goat is. We love, I love seeing the Z command. That's yes. for those that don't yeah, know, so it's like a smart jumping directory tool. And yeah, then you've got that icons. The, uh, oh, go yeah, ahead. so I have, I have Nerdfun icons all set up in my terminal. Recently switched to using the transparent background, which I had to play with my monitor settings because the 
Yeah. My monitor had like too much blue light correction on it. And with the transparent background, I couldn't read the text. Oh no. So right. Twiddle with some stuff there, but yeah, so I've been using Z for a while. The other thing I actually just recently set up too, is there's a, oh, my ZSH plugin that allows you to do Vim commands on your terminal. So mm -hmm. Vim motions on your terminal. Yep. So if I'm here or, and then I hit escape, now I'm in Vim mode and I can Jones choose my HDK and L to move around. I can change so inner helpful. word and change yeah. things. Yeah. It's, it's been an adjustment because I always forget that I go into, I'm not in insert mode and I start doing things and it doesn't work <laughs> like I expect, but so that's been an adjustment, but I really like that one of the, again, one of the same, I think the same guy at work suggested that one recently, the ZSH plugin. Cool. So typically when I start, if I'm starting on a project, I will open. What, before we jump into that, what is this percentage that we're seeing here? What is 73 That is my battery. Okay. But when then what's the line below us at 79? Oh, I'm sorry. The 73% there? Two, I what see two percentages. Yeah. Yeah. So what is that one? That's an interesting one. I'm not sure. You know what I mean? Something to look into <laughs> for sure. Maybe memory, memory usage. Memory probably? Oh, oh it's memory usage. Cool. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. I, so I have a, str a stream deck, right? <laughs> you know, these little things, stream decks. Yep. And I've got, it's not going to focus. I've got my CPU usage as like a constant. Oh. Which is fun. Yeah, I that's cool. I didn't know that was built in. The, I just recently hid the status bar. So I wanted to put some things on my prompt. So it was just so I could keep an eye on some of that stuff. Totally. Especially for my work stuff, we run like a pretty big Docker Compose environment locally Yeah. for some of our stuff. So it can get a little greedy. <laughs> yeah, 73%. Um, that's pretty high. Yeah. So I think that, I think the local compose environment is running right now. So I just recently started using your plugin for Tmux for the session managers. Sweet. So one of the things that typically when I start a new project, we'll look at this. Since we're both in the learn, build, teach community, we can pull that repo. So now I'm in here. I use NVim. So NVim, I have alpha for my startup screen. And then typically from in here, I'll just pick a project. And this is evolving as I started using Tmux. Like I think now I'll probably go more to just doing nvim dot and out of them in the directory. When I was using Kitty before, I was using nvim projects to manage my projects and jump around between projects all from one right. shell. But now that I have different Tmux sessions for them, I, I may not be using that as much, right? Because I can just jump between the Tmux sessions if I want the different editor instances as I'm touching the different apps at work. And then in here I have, if we go look at, I'll just pick a file. So this is Svelte, it's installing all the language servers, I have Tailwind, color highlights, all that sort of stuff. Using which key, and I have a bunch of stuff bound in my which key um, for formatting and like, have you Git customized a lot like, of this? Toggle blame. Right. Uh, yeah, so I've, I've done a bunch of customizations. I can actually go through maybe some of those a little bit. Um, I like that you show the LSPs at the bottom. Like what yeah, LSPs are active, LSPs, that's yeah. kind of cool. One of the things I don't, and I haven't figured it out yet, is like if you have like additional LSPs like NullLS or whatever, which I use NullLS to pipe out to like Prettier and ESLint, it doesn't show NullLS as attached to the buffers. It only shows the actual LSPs, I think, because they're managed by Mason. Hmm. Right, so if I do, right. if I go into my dot .files, and now we're in this file, right, it says I have LSP in Copilot. But if I do LSP info, it actually has NullLS attached to, because I'm using null. Like I, I shell it to NullLS. I pretty much just for prettier, for formatting and ESLint for linting. So the um, the Lua line plugin just doesn't. Or pick is it that called up. Lua line? Yeah, you you can I'm definitely for this, yeah. go out of your way to learn what Lua code is running and add some code to try to add that or even reach out to lazy vim and see if they have you know, contributors that know what's going on with that but yeah it's, yeah it's i just cool haven't in, haven't invested enough in that to see that yeah so i have the mode i'm in the branch i'm on this is trouble so this is just like the and here they're all spelling things because yeah. i have c spell enabled and the, <laughs> the file i'm in the lsps and then just some basic stuff file format percentage where i am in the file those sort of things what um, are you... this is as I've been getting the things in the top status bar, so I moved my Tmux status bar to the top. 
Yep. And this is using the capuchin theme for Tmux, which comes built in. As I get some of this up here, I'm probably going to start tweaking this a little bit more and moving some things around. Like, I don't necessarily need the... Like, I used to have the file I was in down here, and I removed that yesterday because I have that up here now. Like, some of those sort of things I'll, I'll tweaking as we go. But So this is Git signs. This is how I use, like, to stage and preview hunks and those sort of things and reset hunks. And you're asking about configuration, right? So one of the things I started doing is actually mapping all my witch key stuff. So if you use witch key. Yeah, the hotel. Totally. Um, but I didn't realize this. You can, inside the individual components, you can use witch key to register mappings for those components. So in here, you can see I have all my witch key stuff is behind leader G. Yep. And then this was the part that annoyed me. I never had this part before. I had the witch key because I had the descriptions and stuff in the Vim key map setups. But I didn't have the top level. So when I hit space for my, when I hit space for my space, not enter for this. Right level right this g wasn't showing up it was just plus prefix mm -hmm. so that was one of the things I, I recently figured out recently being last night was that you can remap these like this in and i like doing it inside the config for the actual plugin so that they're grouped with the plugin and not a global sort of i have a global which key one for generic key mappings but right. keeping the key mappings for plugins with the plugin just helps me mentally know where to go if I want to tweak something or twiddle it or change it. Yeah, definitely. So you see here, it's like stage hunk, reset hunk. What do you think buffer. you use the most here? What is like default behavior? You're working, you're doing get things in NeoVim. So this is something that I want to share. So more I do of, this like, to yeah. look at, I do, I'll do this if I'm like, if I'm looking at a file. So say we go here and this is, I do, and we'll just do this now. But if I delete this, so now I can do, LH, no, wait, is it leader GH? This is one, this is a newer one for me, but I think if I preview hunk, so is that leader GP? Why is it leader G? I'm doing leader F. Capital? Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's capital. capital. So P. leader GP, that'll preview the hunk. Yeah. When I actually go to write all my commits and stuff, I have lazy git configured and I have lazy git. Um, the plugin for lazy git inside of nvim so for me it's just leader g and then g again for lazy git and now if i quit uh, if i actually save the file leader gg so here like if i'm writing code and i'm looking at diffs and i can't remember what i changed like as i'm making changes i'll use that but when actually time to go and commit my code i'll go into lazy git here and do everything from inside of lazy git you have lazy git how do you get to it space gg space gg cuz it's yeah. and i have the lazy git extension for NeoVim set up for that. Yeah. Yeah, LazyVim, um, I think, has that all pre-built in. Yeah. And then same thing here. You can do stage and unstage hunks, all that sort of stuff right from in here, which I really like. Yeah, Lazy gets great. The other thing I did recently was I set up using Commitizen. They have a Gitmoji extension. Mm -hmm. So when I go to write my commit messages, I can just pick refactor or whatever, and then you get those emojis inside your in the commit message, which for me just helps like when I'm scanning commits to look to see what, like what I was doing, I don't have to read the whole thing. I can just look for the icons that sort of, and it's very conventional commit like it just uses emojis instead of like feature colon. Yeah. Um, can, I'm a commit conventional commit guy. Do you have like your yeah. team members all doing the same formatting or is this just a personal choice? It's a personal thing. Why is yep. it not letting me escape though? Control C. Yeah, it wasn't working. There I, you go. I, must have, I was messing with my key maps a lot last night, so I probably broke something. Sure. And then I use a lot of telescope stuff. So these are all bound to leader S for telescope. So it's search, word, those sort of things. I'm trying to get better about using quick fix lists from the search results here to do both changes on things. If I don't have LSP set up for whatever reason to do like renames and things, yeah. but I have files and buffers and all those, right? So if I go to, uh, those are under finder.lua. So same thing here, right? I have a bunch of extensions, projects, FCF, FCF, file browser, live grep, and then I have all the binds here. So um, I'm noticing using... you disabled 
the the tab feature that Lazy Vim comes with, like the file tab. Oh, so I'm not using Lazy Vim. This is I used uh, TJ's TJ Devries as I used his. Okay, so you sort of started from scratch. I with, yeah, I started with Lunar project. Vim and then got to the point where I wanted to just play with it a little bit more, so I, I went to my own config. So I used yep. LSP zero. I use I use Lazy for my plugin manager. I'm using LSP zero, and then like the Mason stuff there. Yep. If I go to what is it? plugins. Knit.lua. I have a bunch of plugins, but I'm using like um, Mason Null LS. Null, well, Mason, what's the one? There's a Mason extension for, are those in all of my LSP? Those might be in my LSP. Yeah, so Mason LSP config, NVIM LSP config, LSP zero. To manage all of those, all of that stuff, right? Yeah. And that was a, th these, like, when they came out with the Mason LSP config and then LSP zero, like, these were just huge for sort of minimizing the amount of configuration you actually need to do. Totally. I've played around with LSP zero for a while. Uh, I'm now using Lazy Vim's distro directly. So he's yeah. solved a lot of those problems because it is quite a bit. And a lot of these things have to be in a certain order in order to work. So yeah. You put like Mason before LSP zero before like there is a handful of these things that have to work in a certain way. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and it's I not see... too bad. Like my whole LSP file is only like 160, 160 lines. It's not bad. And I notice you have Copilot. So do you have like basic comp completion in Copilot? Yeah. So I have that all set up. So if I was to do like, require, so those are coming from Copilot. Yeah. And then just like command. Command N and P for next and previous. Mm -hmm. Command Y to pick it. Cool. Yeah, I have a similar setup. I like it. I'm using for Copilot. I'm not using the sort of the right. So the default like thing that GitHub shipped as a product is like a NeoVim plugin that has a sort of virtual text that you can choose to select. Yeah. And I've done something that you've done, which is put it in comp. So it's an auto Yeah, so that's what I'm using. I'm actually instead. using copilot.lua yeah. from this guy. Yep. And then he has another one, which is CMP copilot that works yep. in conjunction with this. So you put those together and you can get this. Yeah. Exactly. It's great. I think I've really enjoyed it so far. The, the one thing I haven't done is figured out how to get more than one or two results. I know Copilot has some features where you can ask for more results. Yeah, and you can also, there's a command that comes with the Copilot thing where you can do like the panel. Yeah. And then it's not enabled by default, but if I, so if you do like function to enable Copilot panel, right? And then you can do, what is it? Is it Copilot? I think it's the yeah, it's Copilot panel, right? And then this will synthesize the results and then you can move through these results if you want to see like bigger suggestions. I, I find it's good, but I tend to, for bigger things, I don't want to take a big suggestion all at once. I'd rather almost go through it line by line to make sure that it's doing what I want. I've had too many scenarios where if you just take the big suggestion and you don't actually pay attention, it has little sort of bugs in it that come back to bite you later on. Sure. But by I'm using it as, yeah. as an intelligent autocomplete exactly. sort of in smaller chunks, I think it works better. At least for me, it works better that way. That's how I use it most of the time is just for the sake of autocomplete. But it's more helpful than just this is a function or this is an argument that I'm expecting. Like It can be like, here's the whole line of code you're probably looking for. Exactly. And that's why it's so useful for me in comp because comp usually is Here's this one line of thing that you probably are going to type. So I'll just give it to you as a suggestion. So very cool. Yeah. Are there any other like specific plugins or features or things that you're really excited about right now or that you're finding extremely helpful for you in your day-to-day -day work? So I really like Harpoon. I don't know if you use that one. Yeah. Why don't you that talk about really it? Good. 
Yeah, show, show people. Yeah, that so don't know so what I use harpoon, is. which is sort of a like an intelligent use of marks, really. So it allows you to mark files and then quickly jump in between them. So I have it set up so that like is it, I just changed it because I, I was having problems with Tmux on the Mac, where I couldn't send control semicolon through from my terminal into Tmux. It hmm. won't read it. And it has something to do with the way that the escape character on the semicolon is. I had it bound normally when I was just using Kitty, my my jumps in Harpoon, I have one through four on my home row. So it's J, K, L, and semi. And they were with the control key and it worked great. So I could like, jump to file one, jump to jump to file one, jump to file two. But the, the fourth file stopped working. Right. And it turns out it's because something with the way that the Mac sends through the ASCII for the semicolon, it doesn't get interpreted yeah. by Tmux correctly. It was, so I remapped mm. it to, or it does it with the control key. I remapped it to alt and those. So now I have alt, J, K, L, and semi, and those jump between the files. That's cool. I like that. So yeah, so they're all in my home row. Oh, I guess the other thing too, is I recently, just before middle last year, late last year, I got a Moonlander for a keyboard. Yes, Team Moonlander. Woo. I'm still, I've got a bunch of like home row mods and stuff. Yeah. For me, and if I go here, can we see? Yes, I know I'm sharing my entire screen. I want to go to Oryx. Can you see yeah, this? Yeah, show us. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is. So the... I have a bunch of like home row mods. So on my home row, on both hands, and these are mirrored, right? So A is command if I hold it. And the same thing here, semicolon is command if I hold it. So they're like tap and holds. So I don't have to leave to search for like shift or command. Yeah. And then I have like my return key is down here where my thumb sits naturally. And my space bar is down here where my thumb sits naturally. So I don't move them. And then I have a layer for my symbols. So if I tap this thumb cluster key and then we hit this, now I have all my symbols, right? So I have my braces on either hand right. with the opening and the closing for the common ones I use all the time, right? Cool. That makes sense. And then these keys here mirror what would have been on the number key. So one is exclamation, two is at, but I just move them down a row so they're easy to reach. So one thing I the, the struggle with the moon there a little bit is getting up to that, that top row or the, the inside rows. So here, that's why these aren't really mapped because they're just a lot to reach for. Yeah. So I don't tend to use them. And then I don't use these as much just because they're a little bit longer on the reach. But by moving these down on the layer, now it's, they're just super easy to use right when I need them. So I got a 3D printer recently, and so mm -hmm. I have a handful of keys I don't use, and I was able to 3D print, like, covers to just okay. not have them on the keyboard anymore. I also filled in the mitten thing. I don't use that because I'm at a really big tilt with their little yep. kit that they offer. So that was a fun project. Why did I lose that? When I switched over, I lost. So I switched. I recently switched to Arc for my browser, mm -hmm. and it does some cool things. Where if you're focused on a tab that's playing video or something, and then you switch to another window, it pops the video into a little float so that you can still see what's going on. And when I switched back and forth between the browser, somehow I lost the float for your video, so I'm not seeing you anymore. When I like, oh, interesting. Yeah, I that's... haven't figured out exactly how that feature works. It works and sometimes and other times it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, Arc, we could probably go a whole hour talking about Arc as well, but let's see. So are you, you're using the T session manager. Have you found it useful or are you regularly using the pop-up to switch between sessions? Yeah, so I actually, I am to the point where I actually, let me just do this and then quit out. So I actually mapped it. So I have, the other thing I have is I have on my Oryx, on my keyboard, I have a layer for hotkeys. Mm. So I hit the thumb cluster on my left hand. I hit three, which activates this layer. And then I use it to jump between all my apps, right? Cool. So I jump to Kitty, I jump to Arc, I jump to whatever. And then here it actually launched, if I'm in a Tmux session, it'll launch TMS. Love that. So it's a single so, key binding, right? You just hold. It's, it's a corded key. So it's, it's the. It's a corded the, key binding. Yeah. Yeah, so my thumb cluster T launches it here, right? Do you use other keyboards? Is this a laptop? It is. I saw the battery percentage. So it's a laptop. So how are you when I you don't, don't get so to I, I haven't. I haven't typed. I don't travel much. I don't go into the okay. office. I haven't worked 
in the office for since before COVID, like we've been fully remote for a long time. So I have a laptop, but I use it like a desktop. It's always okay. in the little dock at home and I don't typically travel with it much. But yeah, though, no, there's definitely a lot of fumbling if I have to type on a regular keyboard currently. It's just yeah. not. That makes not sense. Used to yeah, it so you're on the moon lander the majority of your time. Exactly. Yeah. If That's I had nice. to go into the office or if I have to travel, like I'll probably take it with me at this point. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, lovely. so I have it here and then I was actually fiddling around a little bit last night and I, I don't know if this is in the scope of what you want to talk about, but we, this is a session manager and it's great for switching sessions and stuff, but I was also wondering what it would take. And I, I play with it a little bit, I had it working, but I didn't love it from here, be able to just close sessions that you're not using anymore. Yeah. I've been thinking of like control Q or something and you could kill it. Um, yeah. So yeah. actually let me, let, I can show you what I do day to day. Uh, I'll, I'll go a little bit more into my workflow after this and I can show you what settings I've had set up to kill sessions yeah, very so quickly. I, I started playing with this a little bit last night. Just because I was curious what it would take. Um, I need this guy. It's the and shell script. Yeah. 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 So here's the shell script. So I added a control C for close. And then down here, I just added a delete session bind. Yeah. Control C executes team of system kill with the session name. And then it realized the session list, which feels a little weird. And then the other part was I didn't know if it would make sense to like, and I was just curious, but so from here, like, I wouldn't want to be able to go down or I wouldn't want to go like down here and try and run that command. So I didn't know if there was a way to do it, like filter it. So it would only be available. Like when you're on a so session, control S is the way to filter only sessions. No, I know that I just didn't so want you to could like, you put, do like, that and then C here. Yeah. Oh, and if you're in a session, change the header bar or something to have the the command. I should know if there was any way to like only activate like Control Q or Control C when you I had think, a, on a session. But you probably I don't. think performance wise, you'd lose a lot. Yeah. It'd be it wouldn't be performant if you were trying to check something every time you moved up or down. And we've yeah. decided as a community, the open source community around this project, Control C is copy for Linux and Windows users. So we yep. avoided that binding. Oh, that um, makes sense. But I like your idea. I'm sure I could implement it. Uh, it would be fairly straightforward to yeah, have so a kill session. If you pull up your Tmux config settings, I do recommend a don't detach when you kill a session. And so what that means is you can very easily just close out a window of the session you have open and it'll switch to an existing session. Yeah, so I, detach on destroy off. I see you set those. So those are the ones I recommend. So what you can do is if you don't want a session open anymore, just switch to it and close out all the windows can be a really yeah. quick way to just, I don't want this one. anymore. Yeah. I think close I also do, windows. what is it? I do the bind key. And then I think X I have set up to do that. Yeah. So you can just say, close the final windows, or if you have more than one window, you can, you can do, it takes a couple of keystrokes, right? Yeah, it's two, right? Cause it's like the, the bind key, which is for me, corded is control a, right. And then X right. will kill that session. Totally. Cool. Yeah, is there any the other, other cool over, right? or interesting things you want to show off? I want to switch places. I'll show you a few things that I think might yeah, yeah, no, you. absolutely. Let's switch. The, the things that I like the most is like when I run to you, it opens up full screen. I have my fuzzy defaults. So we'll just go to like about files. Mm -hmm. Let's see. It's going to be fuzzy fish. So I use a fish shell. I've decided to have it reversed out of border, remove the info, overwrite the markers use some specific colors. So that gives me this like super minimal sort yep. of color coded style that matches like all the other colors in the rest of my workflow. So that's been super helpful. 
And the thing that I do is, right, I can very easily open up lots of projects. So I just opened up five in just a few seconds. What I'll do is I'll just, something that I haven't talked about is having issues with this right now. So how do you like, just only because I saw it and I used to use it. How do you like, I, before I switched to the Moonlander, I used Carabiner and I had some profiles there to make like the met like the what do they call it the meta key or whatever it is like right how do you find it with the moonlander like i went all in on just programming all my shortcuts via the moonlander once i got it yeah so let's let's see it say show off my workflow so mine's a, a lot more traditional than mm -hmm. yours. So I have, this is not my layout. Let's go to Josh's Moonlander. <laughs> this is my layout. Again, I, I just don't use the outside ones. Space yep. and enter are on the thumb. And for me, I liked control being here because it's the same as my laptop and my, I have a couple other mechanical keyboards I enjoy using. So I don't mm -hmm. just use one keyboard every day. And then control is bound here to Z. So I can just use my pinky to get to yeah. control. The thing I like the most is this escape hyper. Caps lock becomes escape. And if I hold it, so if I do things like hold a hyper and do E, it opens up emoji picker. If mm -hmm. I do W, it pulls up my browser history with, with yeah. arc. If I do A, I have AI pop up with Raycast, so I can just start mm. asking GPT something. So that's been really useful. The reason I use Carabiner Elements as of this point is I can do the same thing with Z and Caps Lock on my built-in keyboard yep. and my other mechanical keyboard that I don't program. And so all of my keyboards all share that these kind of mm. clever key bindings which goes a long way for me that I get yeah, to I mean, always have the same, easier. yeah, the same keyboard shortcuts everywhere across any keyboard I'm on. No, and then I sense. use the special characters I put here are super helpful for like switching between tabs. And yeah. so I can just hold command shift and then this finger lets me switch between them. And then when I'm coding, so let's just go to a TypeScript file. I can very easily before um, I can do, I use my fingers, my index and middle finger mm -hmm. to roll. It's like a rolling motion to get to that. Yeah. So that goes a really long way and has been helpful for me so far. Yeah. But again, if I'm, I think the thing that I encourage a lot of people to try and I can zoom in is no, I can see it. It's the, I, mean. I, I have all of my Tmux bindings bound to command keys. So it's like a Mac OS style key binding. So mm -hmm. I think of the top, like the windows and Tmux as tabs. And so I can hit command T to create yeah. tabs and I can use command shift arrow or control tab or control shift tab to switch between them. And then command W closes them. Mm -hmm. It's like any other Mac OS application. And like so that. I can just command W to close and I can switch between all the ones that I want. And that's my way to do things very efficiently and I'm not doing something completely different than all the other apps on my computer. <laughs> yeah. It's like, they're all the same key bindings because it's like command T for new tab. Okay, great. The concepts here as well. The yeah. other thing I do that I like is like command P is something we know in VS code. And I do that to open up my file finder. And so mm -hmm. we are like Tmux, right. And I can do things like command O and it'll open up, it'll even detect GitHub repos and let me very quickly and easily open 
URLs. Is that a is plugin? Helpful. Or is that one you did yourself? I forked it, but yeah, it's a URL. URL. Yeah. yeah. So this one can let me do that, which I enjoy. And so like that. the other thing that comes across really helpful is using, so you, I use control HJK and L to switch between panes. And yeah. Works... So I set that, I set up VimTMS right. Navigator recently. Yeah, yeah, like that. So that, Especially that when you're in Vim, like if I have a split for a terminal on the right and my Vim on the left, I can get to out to the terminal and back to Vim you can the switch. same way that I was just moving around terminal windows or even just Vim splits, right? It's all just seamless. Yeah. And I also use the fish shell. So if I want to do NPM start, you'll see it's not super visible. It's not going to be very visible for people, yeah. but it, it, it knows what it has and I can just choose it. I also reach for my history a lot. And so this is my command history. I also have a clipboard history that is bound to hyper V. So instead of mm -hmm. pasting command V, I do hyper V and it gives me all of my What are you using clipboard for the command history. history there? That is Raycast. So it has a clipboard history feature built in. No, no, the, sorry, that, yeah, no, I, that I saw. The command history, are you using like FCF? So FCF has a way you can bind it to uh, control R. Yeah. So I do, I have it set up for control R. I just don't have the pretty float like that. Yeah. So it just, like I just get a couple it in settings. the settings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's just, it's just a, it's here. Yeah. So FCF control R options, you can uh, change the order history. Okay. Yeah. So that go, it goes a long way for me. I enjoy it. The thing that I think has helped me the most recently and the thing I have really enjoyed is that with lazy Vim, you can have in Vim slash plugins, right? And so this, all of these are the plugins that I've either updated to modify or I've added new plugins. And so what happens is when the file goes in the plugins folder, it automatically loads. There is no need to like reference a plugin in some sort of table in a config file. I literally yep. just drop the file in here and I restart Vim, Vim and it'll just automatically detect that and load it and do everything it needs to do to work. Yeah. So I have the same similar setup where it just reference because the init.lu is in there in the plugins folder, I have it set up so that it just, it does the same thing. So I just add a plugin by dropping a file in my plugins directory and configuring it. I wanted to show off that I do something slightly different. I have a map Vim key map set command, and you can yep. set descriptions on these key maps, which some people might not know. And so in normal mode, I have things like angle bracket G, which I find really useful. So mm. if I have if I have like multiple places in Vim, I can do like bracket G and it'll jump to it. I'm yep. having issues with my escape key today for some reason. That's fun. And so that lets me jump between them if I want. Between like get statuses. Um, yeah, between change tongues. Yeah. Yeah, I do the same thing. I just have it bound to like GN and P or something. Like yeah. leader GN and P just. Yeah. And I don't know if you use angle brackets like D to jump to diagnostics I and things don't, like that. Only because I have them mapped behind a layer and not on the main layer, which makes them hard to get to. And so I think the most recent thing that's been really helpful for me is I can do space G Y and it gives me, it gives me a URL in GitHub to, the line. to that line and it's hashed. So it's hmm. never going to change, right? It's like a permanent yeah. placement. And I use that constantly at work where I'm like, Hey, coworker, here is the exact line of code that I want to reference and talk to you about. Yeah. So that one's gone a super long way and that's just a. I think that's just like GitHub. Yank clip. I forget what it's called. Oh, 
Well, that's fine. I like that. But that one's been really useful, and that was just a quick get linker. There we go. Get linker. Okay. And so, and that's a super. Oh, that's not a low, low friction. Or, yeah. Yeah. So that I one like just that. you just add it, and then you just bind what you need to bind to it. So, yeah. I think I put it. Where did I put it? Anyway, you just you just bind to it yeah. how you want. So that one was cool. That went a long way. By the way, I do a lot of this C spell words, and I had things to my inline to my files so that C spell doesn't complain. Yeah, I have a global C. I just haven't added some of them yet because I only recently right. reset C spell up. But I have a global dictionary set up. Global so dictionary. That, and that then that's sense. in my dot files repo, so that if I have to rebuild, I don't lose it. So I have my computer set up with. They got us all new MacBooks last year, so I invested some time in getting my environment set up with Ansible so I can just run the playbook and have all my stuff installed Yeah, on a new machine in a matter of a few minutes. So that's in one of the things that does is pull my dot file. So if I do that, I'll check, I check in that, the dictionary there. Cool. And so the other thing I think was worth noting for me is I have Git Tmux, there's a Git Mux plugin that you can add. It's like a binary that runs. And so I have all of my Git status stuff in my Tmux oh, bar. Oh, that's how you do that. So this is in Tmux. So it knows what branch I'm on. It knows that I need to push five commits. There's 10 files changed. There's 13 mm -hmm. new files. And then these are the global diffs. So there's been 14 changes overall yeah. and three removals. Three. And then these are my tabs, which I have a recent plugin that I just released that takes the Tmux window name and it just shrinks it down to just a single icon. Mm -hmm. And so it's very minimal. It's like out of the way. And I have it bound so in command G opens up lazy git globally. So I don't have to be in NeoVim to see it. I can yep. be anywhere in Tmux and it'll always open up the project. And I also something that's what was important to me is I have command shift P, which is a really popular Oh, I can't get around today. Command shift P will show, it doesn't look great here, but it shows commands with telescope. So you can get autocomplete. So like I just recently, let's see, get signs, right? Or mm -hmm. Gmux navigator or whatever. So it autocompletes, which is really nice. The other thing I have is command P is find files. And what yeah. I've done is I've made it so that if I open up my website and hit command P, it uses FD to only look at the files within the folder that I'm in, which goes mm -hmm. a long way because like at work, I have this energy choice app, which lives in a mono repo, but yeah. I can open it up as its own session and I can do mm -hmm. command P and it'll search through the Just energy choice folder. files. Right. And if I really need to go out of my way, I can open up the mono repo and I can look at through any and all files if that serves me. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just instantaneous, right? And I can get around incredibly quickly. I have it. Command J is what binds this and command yep. K, K is what I have set up for this Tmux session switcher. That's a built in command. Yep. And so I just drive all my workflow with those keyboard shortcuts. Um, so you're using to... those finders and things for telescope there. You're using telescope outside of NeoVim, right? That was just like from your Tmux session, you were doing the, like the history finder stuff. So the history one is just a FCF command built into. Oh yeah. You install you... FCF. Yeah. And then there's quite a lot of telescope specific ones that I use. And yeah, so it goes a long way. You've probably learned that this all just takes time and you add new things step by step, like the opening URLs with command O. It's yeah. That just showed up one day as, as I was looking through Tmux plugins and yeah. I was the one that I forked it and I contributed to that. And I added the detecting GitHub URLs. So like anytime in quotes, there's a username slash project name, like I'm just going to always treat that as a GitHub uh, yep. URL. And so now it's so helpful. Like I pull up a dot file and I 
want to share something with somebody or look at the docs, I can just hit command O and open it. Um, yeah. And so that just no, came cool. from an afternoon of some shell scripting and some regular expressions. And now it's just muscle memory. I hit command yeah. O and it, I know I can open the URL. And are your dot files up to date? Yeah, for the most part, I think okay. there's only a handful of recent changes that, that need to be pushed. Cool. There's some things I want to go steal afterwards, like the Git linker stuff and the, some of those yeah, other Git things. Yeah, Git linker so. went a long way. It looks like you've adopted quite a lot of things. I, I know for me, like, I put everything I can at the top. So like Tmux bar at the top. Yeah. Telescope, there's a default setting in Telescope where you can say, always put the prompt at the top. Yeah, um, I, I don't know why, but for Telescope, I, I like the prompt at the bottom there. Yeah, and everybody has their preference for but sure. I do the I do moving the Tmux bar up to the top, and I think that Git science thing could go a long way. Like, I feel like sometimes it's too noisy right now where I have the Lua line at the bottom of my Vim, and then the Tmux stuff at the top. I yeah. want to try and simplify as much of that as I can. And I would like it in Tmux so that I don't have to be in Vim to see things. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go see how you did that and steal that. I do, I do. I'm as like extremely minimal. Like we know, you notice in NeoVim and Tmux, like all of it, like, there's nothing on the right side. It's just blank. There's nothing. Yeah, there. There's no time. There's no session name. There's not, nothing. It's just completely empty. And then my Lua line is very basic. It shows the, in the current file, the diff, like how many lines have changed. Mm -hmm. And then I have the comp, I forget what the plugin's called, but it like tells you where you're at in the file. Like it'll yeah, yeah, like the, file like name, the, per the percentage or like conditional, the line. Yeah. No, 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 not even that. It just shows like I'm in this function. Oh or yeah. If yeah, I'm yeah. in a component in React, it'd be like, this is in the current component you're in. That kind of thing. Yeah. So I don't have that, but I have, I think, was it, there's a plugin that does stuff with the LSP where it, if you scroll the top of the function out of scope, it keeps the start of the line there. Yeah, that's a popular one. I, I haven't reached for that one, but I know a lot of people that enjoy. Yeah, I know VS Code offers of a similar right feature. Now. Yeah. That's cool. And it's fun to experiment with. I think I didn't call it out directly, but my virtualized lines for like diagnostics and things aren't in line. It actually creates empty virtual lines to show. And so there's all sorts of ways you can visually change a lot of features in NeoVim. And people have gone out of the, even my code action plugin. I don't use the default one. I found a really clever one that is just more visually appealing in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, so it's like just step by step, you add one or two things here or there, and over time, it just becomes this really unique and powerful thing for you. Um, yeah, the other one, I, the one I was just talking about was tree sitter context. Context, yeah. So you just tree sitter to do that. Cool. Um, and the other one I stumbled upon last night that I only installed this morning and haven't really played with yet is there's a refactoring plugin that the Prime Engine put together that yeah. does refactoring actions based on, I forget the book. Um, the refactoring, I I yeah, I yeah. have that installed. I don't use it all the time, but it's useful sometimes to reach for. Yeah, I was trying to do something yesterday, and I was like, oh, I wish there was a like, why isn't there a code action to refactor this? And then last night I was noodling on some stuff, and I was like, oh wait, there is a plugin for that. Let me add that and see how it'll work. So cool. cool. Well, are there any final thoughts? Anything you want to share before we close this out? No, this was awesome. Thank you so much for taking some time because I learned a lot for sure. Yeah, it's always fun to share ideas. I learned some stuff from you as well. And it's always cool to see Moonlander users and how they, your layout's very different from mine, even though we got the same keyboard. It's like, you yeah. chose a totally different approach, which is cool. Yeah. Cool, Mark. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Um, I had a good time with Mark, learned a lot from him. And again, all of the links are in the description. So different plugins we talked about. Both me and Mark's Moonlander layouts are linked, as well as our dot files and a lot of the plugins and terminal things that we mentioned. And I can just recommend that if you don't go there, uh, do check out this video I had with Nick. 
Nisi as well. That was a really good one and interesting one as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one.